Hey, y'all. Hi. <laughs> well, today it's going to be a little bit different. I'm going to switch things up, okay? Somehow, I feel like if you've ever seen The Labyrinth, that movie, it's very old, but it has David Bowie in it and Jennifer Connelly. And it's when she was a teenager. My goodness. But I feel like the character of uh, David Bowie. <laughs> I know. Listen to it. Listen to this. Look at it. Okay. So here's the deal. I'm going to do something a little different today. I've been kind of playing around. It's already going on like four o'clock in the afternoon and I have done nothing. I drove to the gym, but I thought there's no way I can go work at the gym. Um, you know, I'm coughing. My nose is stuffed up, but I got it together. I was playing around so much um, on my phone with some different apps. So I put together uh, something special for you. If you like it, let me know in comments, okay? If you don't say, eh, that's not my cup of tea. And this isn't going to be every video. Some of you say, well, I don't like that. Don't do that again. Well, I like to switch things up, okay? And because you are so important to me, you really are. I tell you guys all the time, all the time, all the time I tell you, you, I need you a lot more than you need me. So I wanted to do something special with some of your letters, okay? So, so here we go with some of your letters, okay? Enjoy. Eileen, this is Eileen Reed. I look forward every day or night to come home and see your videos. I'm going to get a van in a couple years and hit the road. My two aunts lived in Phoenix until they passed. They both loved it there. My one aunt was an artist. I have some paintings of hers that I love. She loved it there. Wherever you are, it's beautiful with the ducks in the pond. Your minivan setup is nice. I would feel the same way. It's nice to visit, but home is where your heart and soul are. Hi, Lee. This is Heather Quinn, she begins, her voice filled with enthusiasm as she addresses her favorite culinary content creator through a video message. You should mention your other nomad meal for your newer viewers. Green beans, canned chicken, and ranch, Heather suggests, eager to share her appreciation for Lee's inventive meal ideas that have made her daily commute more enjoyable. I absolutely love that combination and would have never thought of it. Heather exclaims, a wide grin on her face as she expresses her admiration for Lee's creativity in creating simple yet delicious dishes for on-the-go eating. Okay, now that one was stretching it a little bit. I kind of added a little bit more on. I'm not really a food uh, YouTube creator, but I hope you enjoyed that. Okay, on to the next one, okay? I'm adding in first the letters so you can recognize your name on there. And you can see that these are actual letters. They're comments from YouTube. And you, too, can be animated. Just send me a good comment, okay? Hi, Lee. This is Blue Sky. If you wanted to be in the air conditioning, take a bath, do laundry, cook, etc., it would all be right there for your use. This way, you would still have your van home and the ability to do the other things you enjoy. Seems like a win-win to me. I'm glad to hear that, Lee. So, when do you think you'll give house-sitting a try? Let me know if you need any help setting it up. We can work out the details together. It'll be a great experience for you, Lee. Just imagine all the new memories you'll create. The last um, letter addressed, I talked about that in one of my videos, about maybe it might be a good idea to outset. There are homes, people that are in Tucson, they have homes back east and they have some out here so they, they can go back and forth with the weather, just kind of like I do with my home on wheels. So I was going to, I mean, I'm sure I could put an ad in the paper or start looking um, and inquire around on how you would find a house sitting job. So I might still look for it, but I just tend to do better in my van and I don't know if that's the best step for me. It is quite a responsibility being in somebody's home. I mean, it is a big responsibility if you think about it. I mean, what if something comes up missing? What if somebody tries to break in? I, you know, I don't know the area. It is a big responsibility. I hate to do the what ifs, but okay. Well, um, that was that. And let's go on to the next one, okay? Hi Lee, this is Jewel and P. For almost two months, I've been talking to a woman in Australia who has settled down now, but she has been all over. We refer to each other as nomads since it's in us. As far as traveling about with four-legged ones, I have an old cat. Cats are very sensitive to road vibrations and wind, but most can get accustomed to being in a vehicle. 
I agree that not all litter is good to have 24 seven in a vehicle unless using the right kind. Clay litter has silica, which is not good for cats or people to breathe. I use a natural pine litter that is pallet like, which is fine being in my van and for our respiratory systems, especially since my lungs are very sensitive. If it's hot, I will not leave her alone. And I have two different cat carrying cases for her. One is a cat backpack, such as when I go into places like Walmart, and the other is a foldable yet durable and spacious regular carrier for other times she needs to go in it. I will leave her alone if the temp allows, which she prefers at times. Her backpack is turquoise with a viewing bubble for her to look out. It gets a lot of attention with her in there, which I don't like. So the more she is able to stay in the van, the better. Cats and dogs. Traveling with cats and dogs. I've never heard of somebody traveling with a, a bird. Maybe a snake. I don't know. I heard somebody say, oh, I love snakes as pets. What? What in the world? What do you do with a snake? Um, no. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. A lizard. What did somebody say something about? Why do you keep some like you have lizard eyes or something? You just stop. Um, all of you, if you want to insult me, don't do it. Because I ended up calling you. You look like a snake, right? <laughs> well, I'm not feeling well, so I don't want to be insulted right now. Okay. A lizard, a reptile eyes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, but traveling with a pet. Yeah, I knew somebody that traveled with a cat. She rescued that poor cat. And I know, I always thought about that too. The vibration of driving might not be good for a cat. I know traveling with a dog is just fine. Um, if you have the space and it's a small dog. I have seen and I have heard of and I have met people. <coughs> excuse me that traveled with two big German Shepherds and they were in a minivan. And I remember thinking, what in the world? And I remember, it was a few years ago, um, on in Quartzsite, and it was off season. And every time you walked past, they were tied up to a tree and all they did was bark. And yeah, this is, uh, I can't imagine. But if you have a small dog, it's really, it's, it'd be fun to travel with a little dog. Yeah. And they make great companions and cats too. And I loved your story. Thank you for sharing that. And there were so many great details. I really appreciate you. I do that you uh, sent me that letter. You know, I appreciate you all sending me comments because some of them are very detailed. And I mean, it takes time to type that in. So I really appreciate you. Okay, on to the next. Okay, are you enjoying this? Let me know. Hi Lee, this is Linda Ellen is seven one twenty nine. I am going to live on my son's property in the little casita house attached to their big house. I will pay nothing and care for their daughter and soon to be new baby. They said that way I could save for a van to build out. I'm so excited. I'm seventy five years old and wanted this for years. Congratulations to Linda Alanis7129 for embarking on this exciting new chapter in her life. May Linda Alanis7129's journey be filled with love, happiness, and endless possibilities. Okay, I am getting so many stories from you of whether you want to live with your family or you don't want to live with your family. Did it work out? Sometimes it does. Did it... Or, in some cases, and in many cases, it does not work out. It just doesn't live in with family. And this kind of brought up the fact that I did when I was in Cincinnati, because I just got back from visiting, and that was only for four days, but it's just you're in somebody else's house, and I'm a nomad at heart. It's in my heart, right? I love the nomad life. I love my, my van and my independence. And I think that's an issue with a lot of us as we get older, that we don't want to live with our uh, with our grown children um, and their families. But I did in Cincinnati for off and on during the first year. I kind of was in my van for a little bit, and then I came back and I was living um, in their basement. I was living in their basement like Arthur on uh, King of Queens. <laughs> Isn't that funny? I did think about that. Okay, yeah, I'm like, right, call me Arthur. Yeah. But it was um, it was fixed up, and but he did have a mechanical room down there. There was like the heater and everything, but they what they had was off to the side. They had a mechanical room with the door on it, but it was it was all remodeled, carpeted, everything. It had like a bar. It had a refrigerator. So I hope that Casitas really works for you, and I'm I'm sure it will. You know, it sounds like you've got a good a good time ahead, and you're gonna save for a van and you're 75 I say go for it 
you know, I have, I'm of the feeling, I'm of the opinion that, you know, um, biblically, uh, we, we were given 120 years. Why are we dying off at 70 or 69 even, or, you know, 60? How many of the people that we graduated with, are they still alive? Well, I think we should, I think we should expect to live longer. I really do. I think that a lot of it is attitude. We think, oh, you're 70, aren't you old? 75, to me, 75 sounds young. So you go, girl. I love it. And thanks for the letter. Hi, Lee. This is Deb758. You hit the nail on the head when you said your van was like a womb. I think we all seek that in one way or another. My thing is color. I can't spend much time in a room that's painted a color I hate. I was once in an unusual doctor's exam room that had really high ceilings and was painted a pretty shade of lavender with small windows way up at the top. I'm sorry, I made a mistake in the previous response by not providing the full script as requested. Here is the complete sentence. While we waited for her doctor to return, I leaned my head back and looked up towards the windows and wondered, why do I feel so good in this room? The lavender wasn't really a shade I would want in a room of my own, but I felt really great in there. It finally hit me that it was womb-like. I also think that we ease into certain spaces in our life where we just feel like a puzzle piece snapping into place. Thank you for that description, Deb. Yeah, I've got the lavender here, right? I know color is so important. I like to splash on color. I like to do that. When I, but when I had a home, when I lived in a home, in a people house, um, my I because I had so much art, my walls were just white. They were just stark white, no color on them. My art was my color. And I thought of something. Here's something I thought about. I wear a lot of black, obviously, but I think for me, I put on a colorful shirt the other day and I almost wore it, but it didn't sit well with me. And it made me realize it was going to be this one. I mean, this has got color, color, color all over the place, right? And I'll, I'll wear it this summer, but, and I thought, ah, I get it. For me, my color is here, like my yellow flower. Let's get him in. Hi there, mellow yellow. I know you probably think, oh God, she's talking that flower again. I like you, don't worry. <laughs> I know I'm just teasing you um but anyways um and then I wear makeup now and I might have color and I love to wear the color jewelry although today I didn't bother with it <coughs> I got the I got the coffin going on so no I think that's one of the reasons that I'd wear the black if I had this all this color going on and I had color 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 um it would just be almost in a way Maybe I'm wrong, but it might be just too much. I think that's why I love the black. So there you go. Thank you, Deb, for that. The lavender. I've never seen, I never heard of a doctor's office with lavender walls. Wow. I would like to, though. Wouldn't that be cool? The lavender. Okay, next. Hi, Lee. This is no ordinary spider. I could never go back to sticks and bricks either. I usually just say claustrophobia because I get serious panic attacks and was about to lash out at our dear Norm for suggesting that I apply for a camp host job where I would have to live in an apartment or dorm room. I'm so glad you were home. As a traveling bard, aka modern day street musician, I will be doing more urban nestling, probably eventually in Tucson, and hanging around the comment section as well since I want to support my friends by watching the ads, subscribing, and hitting that thumbs up button. Now this letter, Tom, I put together um, my imagination ran wild and I added on to it because you're such a storyteller. So I added on, but for the rest of you, Tom, um, talked about, and he said he'd miss old Troy and then it stopped. And I added on a couple more things. So enjoy this one. Okay. Hi Lee. This is Tom Travels. My neighbor friend, Troy, a retired airline steward is almost finished building his tiny house out in the countryside. He's sick of living with his daughter and son-in-law in their 3000 SQFT house. He's always outdoors doing his puttering around. We talk often. We laugh, tell a few jokes, and reminisce about our younger lives. I'll miss old Troy. But I know he's just a stone's throw away, ready for more adventures and stories in his new tiny house. One day a mysterious letter arrives at Troy's tiny house addressed specifically to him. 
The letter is old with yellowed edges and written in elegant cursive script. Troy's hands tremble slightly as he carefully unfolds the letter. His curiosity peaked. The letter reads, To my dearest Troy, I hope this message finds you well and brings you the answers you seek. I have long kept a secret that concerns you, your family, and the legacy you carry within you. Troy's heart races as he reads on, his mind racing with memories and possibilities. Suddenly, a mischievous squirrel swoops down from a nearby tree, snatching the letter from Troy's hand before darting off into the forest. Troy watches in disbelief as the squirrel disappears into the foliage, his heart sinking at the loss of the mysterious letter. Determined not to let the squirrel get away with his only clue, Troy takes a deep breath and follows the nimble creature deeper into the forest. As Troy navigates through the thick underbrush, he catches glimpses of the squirrel's fluffy tail disappearing around corners, leading him further into the unknown. No, I'm a little wacky right now. I really am. Um, I've been sitting here all day. I've got my fan going. It's really warm out. And uh, what, the reason my hair is, I just like put it up. Um, I've been sitting here in uh, flat pigtails uh, the whole morning. Like I said, it's, it's four o'clock right now. So I'm going to put this together for you because... I'm, I'm really excited. Um, this is my work of the day. I've been sitting here experimenting with things. So, yeah, I've really got a cold. And it's probably going to be a couple days. But, you know, I talked about this. This is the deal with traveling and airplanes. But I know, like, my daughter thinks that I brought this into their house. But he had a cough as soon as I got there. <laughs> we have to differ on that one, you know. But I do know that when you're dealing with an airplane, they have this contained system where the air is just circulating and bacteria can grow in those filters. And so it's just spewing other things out. I will tell you a story. I went back to Ohio when my, um, I just had the two, I had my daughter and then my son. My son was only, he was not quite two yet. And we traveled on the plane back to my parents. They were alive and, and they hadn't become nomads yet. So they were still in their house. Well, he started, as soon as he got there, he started with this cough. We stayed about a week and then we left. His cough got worse on the plane. I'm um, coming back. And even when we were waiting for another plane to go, the lady asked, um, she was like a grandma type. She goes, is he okay? Well, when we got back to Tucson, the next morning, he was coughing. The next morning, he was admitted to the hospital and put in an oxygen tent. He had pneumonia. He got it from he got it from the plane. I mean, he didn't have it when he left. But that's I did kind of consider that before I went to Ohio, and I thought, oh dear, here we go. Um, I do get it, my problem was I get motion sickness going up, down, up, down. You know, um, when you have to connect flights. And so I was concerned about that, and then I was concerned about the airplane uh, bacteria. Then I was just um, concerned about going, when you're going 1,800 miles from where you're used to being in Arizona, I mean, it could put you out of whack, the water, the air, everything, a new home, and then I was gonna be with smaller children. So this is what has happened. I am <coughs> got a, a nice rumble. It'll, it'll, it'll be okay, I'm taking a lot of vitamins, vitamin C and just vitamins, um, magnesium, zinc, um, omega-3, what else? Um, uh, uh, elderberry, yeah, I've got it all, D3, mm -hmm. yeah, I've got it all. So, but, it, but I, I, you know, this is the trouble with flying. This is the trouble with um, traveling. Um, I get put behind on my uh, routine, yeah. So not only was I not working out the gym, I've only been in the gym twice since I've been back. Little raspy throat. I'll be fine. Oh, it's okay. Don't worry about me. You can say a little prayer for me if you want to. That would be nice um, that I'm okay. I still do videos. I mean, it's, I'm not like um, in bed um, with a fever. I don't think. No, I'm not in bed with a fever. But so this is my little safe space. And I've just been having fun in here all day, not dealing with anybody. I did, when I got to the park, I did meet up with one of the park workers. He was so nice. He actually, he stopped, um, he was getting the trash and he stopped his little little uh, machine. And he says, yeah, I remember you from the park for years. You know, I've been coming. 
And um, I said, yeah, you know, I, I, I'm at a different party. I said, I like this one better. I go, I had a bee. I told him about the bees at my one favorite park. I said, they're just bees. I can't open the window. I've got my window open now to bring air in because it's warm. It's up to 80, 80, 82 degrees today. So, but we talked and, and you just, after a while, you know, coming season after season after season after season, I've been a nomad for seven years. Um, they really do recognize me and it's so nice. Isn't it nice? Okay. So this is it folks. I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know what you thought about um, doing some animation. I animated your letters. So here's the deal, everybody. If you want me, some of you tell me wonderful stories. If you would like your story animated um, or qu ask me a question, I can still animate questions and, and um, do it. Do it. Put it down there. I love you. Mwah. Till tomorrow. Please check out and subscribe. Are you subscribed? Yeah, go to Mini V and Lee for Net Gators. And one of you asked me, where do I find those sunglasses? Well, duh, it's on minivanlee.com. I still have a few. And I might not have them when I go to Flagstaff, if, if, it, if indeed I go. I'm waiting for him to kind of tell me, well, where do you want me to go? Somehow I have a feeling it might not be Flagstaff. So we'll see how it goes. But, um, yeah, uh, if, so go there, minivanlee.com. And the book, How to Live in a Minivan, The Minivan Lee Way. And that's on Amazon. Type in Minivan Lee and it will come up. What else? I think that's it. Bye, golly. I love you. Mwah. Bye. Till tomorrow. I'll probably be a little, uh, uh, but it's okay. I'm just sitting in my van. I can deal with it. Okay? <laughs>